Hi friends, today is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. This past weekend, it was Maine Maple Syrup Weekend, and I'm sure a lot of you weren't able to go this year, but I did want to read a couple of books about maple syruping in Maine. And the first one I'm going to read to you is called Maple Syrup from the Sugar House, and it's written by Lori Knowlton. Maple trees slumber while the winter winds whistle and whirl until Kelsey feels the sun pushing the cold aside and sees the snow melting, drip, drop, dripping, and the ground below thaws. Is the weather right for the sap run? Kelsey asks. Daddy nods freezing nights and warmer days. Kelsey follows Daddy trudging out to the woods filled with sugar maple trees. Daddy says since last year's harvest, the maple trees have grown and stored summer sugar through the chilly fall and icy winter. That stored sugar is now ready to be collected. Daddy stops at a maple tree. Where is last year's hole? Kelsey asks. It's healed over like the scrape on your knee. Daddy drills a pencil-sized hole into the giant sugar maple. Kelsey hammers a metal spile into the hole with a tap, tap, tap. Then she hangs the first metal bucket. Sap droplets drip. Ting, tingling, aling. We need to keep moving, Daddy says. We've got the whole sugar bush to tap. So this part right here is called a spile. That's the part that they stick into the tree and then the sap comes dripping out into the bucket. All day the trees drink up moisture through their roots from the freshly thawed dirt. All day the sugar rich drops of sap drip, drop, drop, drip out of the spiles and into the buckets. All day and into the next day, the sugar bush camp grows. Mama welcomes grandparents, aunties, uncles, cousins, and friends who bring food filled coolers and helping hands. While Kelsey waits for the sap to fill the buckets, she helps sterilize bottles and stack wood by the firebox and then plays tag with her cousins, Farah and Gwen, until... Daddy, the buckets are full, Kelsey announces. Throughout the sugar bush, everyone works together. Some gather the filled buckets while others lift the buckets and pour the sap into the storage tank on the back of the tractor. Kelsey leads Farah and Gwen to return the empty buckets back to the maple tree spiles. Then everyone moves to the next section of trees. Until... Hours later, the buckets have been emptied and the holding tank is full. Kelsey hears the tank sap splish splash sloshing all the way to the sugar house. And there's the sugar house right here. There, Daddy starts the pump to suction the sap through a filter into a larger holding tank. Gravity pulls the sap down through a pipe to a long, flat warming pan. Below the pan, flames from the firebox heat the chilly, colorless sap, sending it swirling into the evaporator. How long before it boils? Kelsey asks. Soon, Daddy says. And if you could taste that sap, that water they collected from the trees, it would taste like cool, fresh water with a little tiny bit of sweetness to it. Kelsey watches the maple steam roll, rising to the roof vent, then out to the night sky. Look, Daddy, the sap's rumbling, bubbling, boiling. The water in the sap is evaporating, raising the sugar content, Daddy smiles. Kelsey passes wood to Daddy to refill the stove, keeping the fire white hot. Mama passes out hot cocoa, and everyone tells stories to pass the time. So they're evaporating all the water. They boil the water, and all of this steam up here is water that's evaporating. And all that will be left inside of the boiler will be the maple syrup. The sugar will be gone. 
the sugar will be there, the water will be gone. More sap is added, gallon after gallon after gallon. Little by little, the sap changes from clear to golden amber. Daddy takes a spoon and places a drop of sap from the steaming evaporator pan onto his sugar gauge. He checks to see if enough water has evaporated to leave maple syrup. Everyone waits, but Daddy shakes his head. We need to keep boiling. It's not ready yet. An hour later, Daddy tests the sap again. We're getting closer. The rumbling of the boiling sap is the only sound now. Everyone snuggles in sleeping bags, and the adults take turn helping Daddy keep the fire hot. Until Daddy tries again. It's maple syrup! Time to pour! Daddy opens the pour valve on the end of the evaporator. The sap flows down through a filter into the canning pan. Everyone jumps into action, filling bottles, twisting caps, lining them up. Yay! Until the first run of maple syrup is bottled and cooling. Kelsey and Daddy sit down with the family and friends to enjoy a breakfast. Breakfast feast of pancakes, sausage, biscuits, coffee, and ice cream, all smothered in liquid gold maple syrup. Kelsey snuggles up with a blanket while the morning birds chirp. She dreams about the sleeping maple trees awakening, singing their tingling drip drop song until the buckets fill again. Maple syrup from the sugar house. Hopefully you'll all get to have some maple syrup sometime. What I like to do is pour some fresh maple syrup on some vanilla ice cream and eat it as a treat. It's delicious. Today, I want you to work on a handwriting job for me. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a plain piece of paper and I want you to draw some rectangles that look like the door of our classroom. Remember that Hi Smiley is right up here in the top left hand corner. You're going to make 10 rectangles on your paper. You're going to keep going. You'll make 10 rectangles. But when we were at school last, we made the letters T and I. Today we're making the very last of our uppercase letters. Then we're going to start the lowercase letters. This is a center starting capital, and it starts right in the center of the box, right at the top, just like the I and the A and the T did. You're going to go down a straight line, and once you get right near the bottom, you're going to curve up toward high smiley. Then you're going to put a little hat on this letter. Can you guess what letter it is? Yeah, it's J. So then you're going to fill all 10 boxes with the letter J. Start in the center, make a straight line down. Once you get toward the bottom, curve it back up and then put on a little hat. Start at the center, down, curve up, put on a little hat. Now lots of friends are going to start at the top and curve this way and make a hat. That is backwards. The curve has to go toward high smiley. How about this J? Did you notice I started at the bottom? All the letters start at the top. How about this one? Too curvy, yes. And let's do one more. Little hat at the top. If you can do 10 boxes, that would be good. If you can do more than 10, that would be great. Today, after you do these J's, I want you to do a guided reading lesson. 
and a math page. Today, if you want to take a break from your writer's workshop, you can because you're going to do the handwriting instead. Later on today, we usually have library on Tuesdays. So I want you to get a special book today and I want you to read it to a stuffy or to a sibling like a brother or a sister or a grandparent or a mom and dad. And let's pretend it's a library book. Carson checked one out and made a little checkout sheet at the end of his book. It was really cool. Maybe you could try that too. And because you missed music, it would be super fun if you could go on Go Noodle on YouTube and do some of the songs from the Go Noodle collection. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you again tomorrow.